Hey everyone, Bricky here. I know it's weird to see my whole face on this channel, but I wanted to talk quickly about the Hollow Knight thing. Um, so Hollow Knight was obviously the last playthrough I did. And I mentioned at the end of the playthrough of Hollow Knight that I might do the DLC, might not do the DLC, wasn't quite sure what to do. And I realized I only got 55% completed through the game, which is like nothing, but it was curious enough to begin with, you know, I was, I was interested enough. Um, but I, it's a weird thing with Hollow Knight because when I finished the game, I the last boss kind of stuck with me for a little bit. I was very like perplexed about it for quite some time because it was completely against everything else that happened in the game, right? Everything else was either just this kind of upbeat, kind of cheery or also totally depressing boss fight. Some of them didn't really make much sense. Some of them just seemed like random things in the way, like the fluke, the fluke marm or whatever would just seem like a big bug of annoyance. The Dung Defender was cool. He's like an ex-knight for the king or something, you know, but at the end of the day, the Hollow Knight just kind of seemed weird, right? Because the name was the Hollow Knight. I thought I was the Hollow Knight. Why was it chained up? What the dreamers were there? Was it to stop the infection? And if so, why is it there? Was it the old king? And had a lot of questions. So, I, th I looked up some lore videos, like I said I would, and I got really, really interested in some of it. But I didn't look at all of I looked up some things. So I got like the general gist of the main story, Pale King tried to seal away the Radiance big moth thing who was like, you think you're gonna, you think you're gonna make everyone forget about me? Oh no, and then he caused the infection and so Pale King made, had like a son of sorts, which was the Hollow Knight and trapped him away forever to stop the infection and he failed and he died. He died and then he failed. It's depressing. But it's an interesting thing about Let's Plays is that all the times I do my Let's Plays are generally at night. Um, whenever I play it, it's generally at nighttime, uh, mainly because when I wake up, I have to edit and upload videos, and then or up upload and then publish videos, and then I need to work on videos for the main channel, and then I go stream generally, and then I start making Let's Play videos. So I'm already pretty beat, because I generally record between nine to nine o'clock at night to midnight. So I'm pretty tired. And the hard thing about, a, about doing a let's play is you have to maintain pacing. So with a game like Hollow Knight that rewards large amounts of exploration and backtracking, it ends up really killing the pacing. And I think you probably felt that at the occasional time when I was trying to find the right way to go because I was doing a blind playthrough, that it, it really definitely kills pacing. And so Let's Plays are generally better suited to more linear-based games, your, your Last of Uses, your Bioshocks, things like that. Much more direct games are a lot better when it comes to, to for Let's Plays. Um, things like this, not so much. And because of that, it is difficult because on one hand, my job is to entertain. And by constantly talking, it gets me, well, one, I'm already tired, but constantly talking, constantly trying to describe and narrate what I'm doing makes it difficult to, one, notice everything, and two, get through the whole thing and maintain good pacing. Um, so it's like if I were to play Hollow Knight by myself, I probably would have seen a lot more of the obvious things that you're just kind of like, Bricky, how the hell you did you not see that? How the hell did you miss that thing? Bricky. Well, it's because I'm I'm tired and because when you do a let's play, that's the thing you miss a lot of stuff. You ever tried watching a portal let's play? You try watching a portal let's play by somebody who has not played the game before. Even if they're generally pretty good at puzzle games, it will be very difficult to watch because that's just simply the way it is. When you already know what to do, your entire mind perspective changes. And then a combination of doing the let's play, so having to not only put my effort into the game, but also talk at the same time and time of the day, it made me miss a lot of stuff, a lot of obvious stuff, you know? So because of that, part of me still wants to play the rest of the game because now I'm kind of interested in it, but I don't really know if the best way to do it would be in a let's play version. So this is kind of like a video saying, I'm gonna play the game again, I'm gonna play it again. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing it on my own time or if I'll be doing it on uh, stream, I, I don't know. I may, maybe I'll stream it, but right now I'm on the Danganronpa thing that I'm doing right now and that's its own little thing. Um, but I might do it just by myself on my own time because this seems like the game that requires my utmost attention. Streaming is fine because it's a little bit more chill. It's not as uh, not as tiring and it's, I don't know, it's a little bit easier, I guess, than the Let's Play. But I feel like this is one of those kinds of games that I don't want to just leave it as it is, but consistently doing the Let's Play would cause it problems. 
This is kind of one of those games that just doesn't really lend itself to a Let's Play very well. It lends itself pretty well to a completionist, but I'm not a completionist. So, it's kind of like, I know it ended on a very cliffhangery thing, but for those of you who want to know about it, want to see me do the rest of it, I might stream it, but I, I'm not sure. I really don't know. But I do want to play it again, and I'm going to play it again. I want to give it my utmost attention. I want to, I want to give the attention it deserves, because this seems like a pretty damn interesting game that I missed a lot of important stuff in. So, I just kind of wanted to leave you with that. I wanted to tell you, hey, I'm going to give it another shot. I don't know when or where, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to replay it again and really try to experience the game for what it's worth because I did not... It's almost like playing Bloodborne because if you play Bloodborne, there's only like six or seven mandatory bosses. There are a lot, a lot of optional bosses. And it's like if I said I was going to play Bloodborne without the DLC. Like, what's the DLC? It's like the best part, you know? Like, it, it wouldn't be the full experience. So I'm going to do it on my own time or on stream and really kind of... You know, try to sink it in. Try to sink in this story. Because this seems like a very enjoyable experience that I wasn't able to get through this Let's Play. Anyway, just wanted to mention that. Tell you that. Um, I'm going to be making videos later on about other stuff. I got to do Nio, but I'm going to play some... I'm just going to relax a little bit. Play some Dead by Daylight or something in the meantime. Just kind of chill and uh, go from there. Anyway, just wanted to give you an update. Appreciate it very much for watching. And I will... Uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.